So actually, uh, Mark gave me a pretty good introduction because I'm more talking to the, uh, the users than the developers or consultants right now. And I am also looking for, for input. But I just wanted to talk a little bit um, about user pages. But, uh, but first, um, just kind of a little uh, number quiz because it's right after lunch, get us thinking again. So um, I'll flash a couple numbers, and I'm interested to see if everybody kind of knows what they are without Googling, right? So here's a couple numbers. Uh, the first one, probably pretty easy. Everybody's got it, but what is it? Hi. So you know, it shows up in uh, geometry and statistics and probability all the time. Next number. Yep, a natural log. Uh, again, probability and, and math. And um, the next one. Yep. And uh, so it uh, comes up you know, in nature a lot. Um, uh, it's kind of related to the, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Um, yeah, so uh, kind of like pretty looking uh, you know, geometry or whatever, conspiracy theories. Uh, what is it, the, the Last Supper maybe? Um, 42? It, there you go, yep. So it's from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the, the Galaxy. Um, a lot of people like that, but okay, yeah. Anybody else? One fifty. Yeah, that, ex yeah, exactly. So one hundred and fifty is uh, is known as Dunbar's number. So um, Dunbar, uh, I think it was Robin Dunbar, was uh, a social anthropologist, and uh, he did a lot of studies on kind of primates' uh, brains and how uh, socially uh, connected they could be and what kind of social community um, they could have and follow. So um, it was also made famous by Malcolm Gladwell, this guy here, in his book, um, The Tipping Point. And uh, so um, kind of like Mark uh, talked about, it's the point beyond which members of any social group lose their ability to function effectively in social relationships, right? Um, and so one of the famous examples that, uh, that was in the tipping point actually was um, the Gore company. Um, they made Gore-Tex. And through tri trial and error, they found out that uh, this number kind of meant something to companies. Every time a company would kind of reach or pass that number, they'd have some problems, and uh, they, they ended up kind of solving that problem by putting a, um, a hard cap on 150. Basically, they built new buildings uh, with 150 parking spots, and, uh, and when that got kind of close, they just said, all right, we're going to split out and make a new building, and here's our new company, right? Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there's these structural differences that start to appear in companies as their employee counts get bigger and bigger, right? And this kind of makes a little bit of intuitive sense, right? At first, maybe you have a couple founders, um, and then they hire a couple more people. Everybody's pretty tightly integrated. Um, but uh, as it grows, you know, you, you need to seg segment off and have departments. And departments, uh, you know, maybe don't talk to each other quite as much. Um, with that, you know, you, you do get um, specialization. <clears throat> so people are able to go a little bit further. Um, but the, the interaction between employees kind of stays, stays fixed. And there's another name, uh, this guy, I think, uh, Thomas Allen, um, came up with this curve. Um, and it was in the 70s. But what he kind of showed is, is um, and me and Cindy actually were just talking about this, but uh, the, the uh, communication um, between people kind of drops off exponentially, exponentially as, uh, as their distance increases. So you know, the person one cubicle or office away from me, I talk to really frequently. Um, but as it's a couple uh, cubicles away, less and less. And at some point, it drops off till like, you know, the other building, I'm really not talking to anymore. But you might say, well, you know, that was the 70s. It's a long time ago. Um, you know, did we even have email? Not sure. Uh, uh, so maybe technology will solve us, you know. Or, uh, phones, uh, emails can kind of help us out. But um, he revisited this, and, and he actually found in, in 2006 that uh, instead of you know, these communication techniques improving uh, our communication, really, we still have the same amount of face-to-face -face communication. And that's what really drove uh, this kind of deeper communication and, and uh, connection between people. 
<clears throat> um, so, and this is kind of his justification for it. So we don't keep separate sets of people. Like I communicate with this group via email and this group you know, at work via uh, phone and this group uh, versus face to face. Uh, that might be kind of true outside. You know, we might have uh, you know different um, you know uh, instant messengers that have a different kind of social group or a gaming community. But in in the business world, it's not really true. We still usually talk to a certain kind of set of people. Um, so uh, one of the things I was kind of looking at, just because of the name of the conference was uh, um, Enterprise Media Wiki, is just what the what the definition of enterprise was. Um, and you know how how are businesses classified, and that's kind of from the classical sales approach. Um, uh, so a lot of kind of business to business uh, companies, you know, how they classify what size a company is, and kind of what relationships they have, um, and you know how to kind of uh, sell to each type. So unfortunately, I was hoping that there'd be a crossover um, between kind of the definition for business uh, and uh, enterprise, but unfortunately, that didn't really pan out. Um, uh, it looks like the kind of crossover from business to enterprise in the U.S. Um, is kind of, um, uh, or from, from business to enterprise is above, uh, you know, a uh, thousand, right? But uh, this, this 150 for the Dunbar number is happening above, or in between small and medium businesses. And then looking at it a little bit further, um, Europe actually completely changes how uh, businesses are kind of classified. So uh, just for reference, um, they kind of call everything enterprise. So I think it probably serves better for Enterprise Media Wiki to follow the, the European uh, definition. But still, um, you know, in all these cases, um, this 150 number, you know, keeps popping up. Um, it's when uh, companies start redefining themselves and restructuring um, themselves. Um, so, um, you know, what does that kind of mean for, for wikis? Well, you know, what are your guys' thoughts about the differences in general between, you know, Wikipedia and an enterprise wiki? Any thoughts? What's one big difference, maybe? There's probably a lot. More global and... Uh, Maybe just closer. Yeah. So, so the the the, um, the, the answer was, um, you know, Wikipedia is more open, and uh, and the business wikis are usually more closed, right? It's kind of our internal knowledge at a business, um, how we do things internally, and that's that's one uh, that's probably the biggest difference. Um, but any anybody else? Yeah. Um, we often found also that um, there are less issues with vandalism. It's less of a concern because uh, people, generally edits are attributed to people. Generally you have to log in with your enterprise in some fashion and so you're not editing anonymously. And folks don't want to lose their, lose their jobs. Right. Because <laughs> so. the edits are being tracked, right? So, right. you know. Uh, and, and then it's become part of your reputation. That's where I'm going. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, yeah. So another uh, another point is, um, you know, it's not anonymous usually in an enterprise wiki. But one of the kind of uh, the big points I was um, going for really is also that um, you know Wikipedia is not a, a publisher of original thought, right? Um, if I put something in Wikipedia, it should be cited. Um, it should have a reference to it. But oftentimes in an enterprise wiki, that's not always the case. Um, in fact, um, a lot of times, and in my personal um, history, I've, I've found that a lot of what is in our wiki um, represents kind of our communal thought about how an organ uh, our organization works. And, um, and so that's kind of a, an important idea now, right? So, um, you know, Wikipedia ed edit should provide citations to reliable sources, um, but, you know, our information in the enterprise maybe uh, you know, is based off of something or some uh, somebody that uh, that said something. So, uh, like Cindy's kind of talking about, um, you know, that's uh, maybe starting to define what a reputation is. Um, so, you know, have ideas and requirements, uh, practices and definitions, um, and it, and they don't have a, 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 a exterior citation reference. 
Um, and also, it might not be from a, a neutral point of view. We might be talking about uh, something with, uh, with authority. Um, there's some other kind of main differences that you can never, you know, if you wanted to go to Wikipedia and just type in WP colon not, um, you'll find out, uh, you know, kind of one way to define what something is is to define what it, what it shouldn't be or what it isn't. And if you go to Wikipedia, that'll tell you all the things that uh, you should not include in a Wikipedia article. Um, and oftentimes that's what a company wiki actually is. You know, these definitions, dictionaries, just acronym uh, lists. Um, you know, an article that is solely a collection of links. So you could just have an, an employee onboarding page. It just says, here's all the content that you should know as a new employee. Go here, then here, then here. It should take you about a week to, you know, trudge through all this content, and then you're off and running. Um, and then manual, you know, guides and how-tos, all not uh, supposed to be in Wikipedia proper, but a part of a business wiki. So uh, how do we bring this together? Um, so we've kind of said that there's, you know, uh, a problem that companies face when they, when they transition beyond a sum number. We'll just say it is 150. Um, and that uh, company wikis contain new and unreferenced information um, and knowledge. Um, so um, my kind of argument is wikis require social regulation to maintain Enterprise wikis require social regulation to maintain this accuracy, right? Instead of so-called technical safeguards uh, like a, a vault um, where there's a kind of revision control process, ideally we're, we're allowing the community to kind of add content and then uh, regulate it themselves. So how do we resolve this? Well, the, uh, the United States intelligence community might have an answer, and I love their quote. I use it all the time in trying to convince people to to use wikis, um, but they have an internal uh, wiki called Intellipedia. It uh, serves all the you know, big intelligence community uh, agencies, and the ones that I always like to use are the CIA, NSA, and NGA. Um, but this quote is, is beautiful, right? So Intellipedia, it's been written up. It's the Wikipedia on classified networks. With one important difference, it's not anonymous, right? So that's, that's your point, Cindy. Um, we want people to establish a reputation. So if you're good, we want people to know you're good. If you're making contributions, we want that known. If you're an idiot, we want that known too. So that part, maybe we don't want to kind of uh, flaunt um, from the HR perspective. But the important thing is that, that uh, one term there that I highlighted is uh, reputation, right? Um, I really think that uh, um, wikis can help establish reputations within uh, companies and maybe even move toward, you know, a meritocracy. Um, so, um, you know, I think following the news of recent, um, we're starting to see that, you know, trust through reputation or even delegated reputation or delegated uh, uh, trust um, is uh, becoming increasingly important and it's hard to filter through kind of this rubbish of news that we're seeing. So, um, kind of a long quote here, but um, I really like it, so I'll just kind of read through it, but we are experiencing a fundamental paradigm shift in our relationship to knowledge. From the information age, we are moving toward a reputation age in which information will, have, will only have value if it is already filtered, evaluated, and commented on by others. So seen in this light, reputation has, uh, has become a central pillar of collective intelligence today. It is the gatekeeper to knowledge, and the keys to the gate are held by others. Uh, the way in which the authority of knowledge is now constructed makes us reliant on what are the inevitable, inevitable uh, biased judgments of other peoples, most of whom we do not know. So, yeah, right? So, I mean, we can all point to something that's happening in the news right now and say that that's fake news, right? But what's our filter for that, right? So, in, in society, we're having to, to, to choose who we think are reputable, uh, sources and then listen to that and filter, fil filter that out. But in, in, uh, in companies, right, um, we, we probably have a, a similar filtering where when, uh, when an edict comes from, some, some, from one person, we trust it more than somebody else. Or when we're discussing something, or, or especially when we're a new employee, you know, we don't know that at all, right? As I come in as a new employee, I don't know this landscape. I can listen to three different people's opinion on how to design a certain part. Um, and, uh, you know, if I talked to that same employee a year later, he'd say, well, yeah, I would have totally ignored those first two guys and that last lady, that was right, right? So, <clears throat> um, you know, one of the ways that we can start um, 
helping out with this social uh, or this uh, this trust or reputation is through social regulation. So um, I think I mentioned it already, but um, I like to say that wikis allow you know companies to lower technical safeguards, the vaulting or, or controlled uh, revision, in place of social regulation. Um, and I don't know, uh, are, uh, Darren, are you doing a talk on watch analytics at all or? Briefly. Okay. So. Um, some of the guys at NASA put together an extension called Watch Analytics um, that I think um, I found to be just pretty crucial for an enterprise wiki. Um, I used to say, um, you know, it's okay that everybody has edit access because everybody's watching, right? But that was more or less a statement, um, and I didn't necessarily know that was true. And um, when we talk about what this graph is, um, it's not true. Um, as it turns out, just because I, I say somebody uh, or the community is watching doesn't, doesn't actually mean uh, they are watching. So what, what uh, Watch Analytics is is a, a nifty little extension that kind of just demonstrates, um, you know, so we'll look at it really quick here. So um, all the orange little dots kind of surrounding here are users and all the blue dots um, are pages. And so any of these kind of uh, blue dots on the periphery are, are uh, pages that are only watched by one user. So that's bad. We want, we want more than one uh, reviewer uh, watching each page. And then all of these links um, are links from the user to a page that they watch that's in their watch list. <clears throat> and if it's gray, which, I mean, it doesn't look quite this bad on my screen, but this looks terrible on mine uh, or up here. But uh, here you go. Uh, here's some gray links. Um, if it's gray, um, that's showing that they've seen the latest revision. If it's red, it's showing that they haven't, right? So this, this looks like a terrible uh, state of a, of a wiki, um, but if you don't have this knowledge, you don't know what your wiki looks like um, right now. So even though this looks bad, it, it now gives us um, a metric to start moving forward from. So um, it also, uh, puts on, up on every uh, page kind of a um, scrutiny and uh, a reviewer score. Um, so it's kind of showing um, you know, how quickly people are coming um, to watch this page after it's been changed and then how many people are, are watching it. And it's got you know, cool uh, colors, so you know, it gives you a little bit of trust if, if this page is a, uh, is a you know, well-watched and quickly reviewed page. Um, the other cool things it does is it shows you who the editors are um, of the page and then also who's actually seen the most recent version of that page. But um, as cool as that is, um, it, it doesn't necessarily answer the question uh, of if the correct people are actually watching um, the page, right? So um, there's really two types of employees that should be watching when, when pages are, are changed in an enterprise wiki. Um, you know, one would be the subject matter expert. Maybe he's written most of the content, he knows what it is, and someone makes a change, and you know, it's just adding a link, right? But they should, they should be able to review it to make sure that it's got integrity. The, the other uh, is um, you know, a content consumer that's kind of somewhat reliant on this information to do their job, right? And um, without kind of um, capturing who those people are, um, we could have you know, 15 people that are all content consumers watching the page. They can see the latest edit, um, but they don't know if it's the right edit or not, but this might show as a positive score. That, that being said, it's still giving us way more visibility um, than what they previously would have had. Is that my timer? Dang, I need to speed things up, okay. Um, uh, so at the most basic level, um, we need to know who everybody is, right? So know just a little bit about the users in our wiki. <clears throat> um, and I, I really think um, the real name for the user is a, is a really good first step. Um, you know, if, you're, if your wiki uh, user list looks like this, you know, um, it's a bit harder, right? You might start to uh, figure out, sorry, that uh, you know, user 09R Huff is uh, you know, Robert Huff or something down the street. Uh, or in the next cubicle over, um, but, uh, but there's a little bit of a kind of a Rosetta Stone going on there. It's a little bit harder to figure out who the person is. Um, so, um, you know, it, instead of real names, often I've seen kind of emails, and I think maybe a lot of this is tied to some um, authentication um, protocols or LAN IDs, um, um, but nicknames are another one. So, um, 
you know, it's a, it's a little less than ideal. We're not really establishing reputations um, as well when we have um, a bit of a kind of a hard to read name. Um, but just as a, a silly example, um, here's like a, a, you know, a user page for, for me. Um, but um, we can see who the, um, you know, my, my title, a photo, which I think is pretty nice, right? It might be kind of silly, but um, you get to just see who that person is. When you see him in the hallway, if it's a big enough company, you can start like making a connection. Um, say, hey, I really like your, your edit. Um, it, it's a way to kind of maybe, uh, you know, have a bit of an icebreaker. Um, and uh, so uh, we have a, something else where we also have um, some contractors, vendors, and customers that have user pages that they don't necessarily have uh, wiki access. And they're, uh, the background uh, changes, the background color changes and does some other stuff. Um, but then we can start um, uh, you know, actually writing stuff about our vendors. You know, this, this is the contact for this other uh, um, company. Here's uh, you know, the company's page. You know, here's some good contact uh, tools. You know, they're always late on delivery, by the way, and they have you know really uh, you know bad products, right? But um, so you know, title departments. The other cool thing about having um, this is, I think um, we we tried this at my last company with some limited success, but we tried to self-generate uh, an org chart <coughs> um, based off of kind of knowing um, what who who the uh, what the department was that the user was in, and then what their supervisor was, which which we both captured. Uh, we also had an automated way that uh, um, um, we would send out a birthday, you know, uh, wish. Oh, or, you know, uh, uh, so uh, location map is something I've never done, but I thought would be kind of um, cool. Um, but then you can you know auto generate um, contacts. You can do phone lists and email lists pretty pretty easily once you've captured that. Um, and the other thing is um, you can maybe start to capture um, expertise, right? What are people good at in a company? Um, and one of them is just you know are they a, a you know active um, uh, wiki editor, right? And so you can track how many counts or how many edits the users had, and then go through some you know, made up uh, list of badges. Um, ideally, you can have you know, some um, <clears throat> you know, gamification that goes with it. Maybe you give them a, a, you know, a, a gift card when they get to certain levels. Um, but you know, um, capturing expertise is something, again, for that new employee in a company is, is pretty important. Who do I go to to ask for maybe uh, help on Excel or some other uh, you know, common software pro uh, programs that are used in a company? So once I start capturing um, you know, expertise, I can start displaying it on um, the software page that, that talks about you know, how to install it or how to use it or some tips and tricks. But then it can also start pointing um, the other users to you know, who to ask questions. Um, so right now, I, it was just collected and it was self-reported. <clears throat> um, but in the future, um, you know, I'm hoping to gather more skills and tools um, and gather kind of uh, more uh, areas of expertise that we can start uh, demonstrating. Um, but there's some of them. Um, this is kind of what it looks like, but from a visual, this is how we kind of collected it at first. Um, just visually now, you can start looking at stuff and, uh, you know, so E was, uh, they were an expert. Uh, C meant they're competent, and uh, T meant they needed training. And so it's pretty discreet. You know, eventually you might move to like a you know a one through ten scale or something, and maybe eventually there'll be some testing that comes through, and it's not uh, self-reported. But at least for now, um, uh, kind of going from um, the bottom up, it's giving uh, other users an easy uh, easy access to find out who the person is that's the knowledge expert, who I can go to to go find something about this program that I, that I don't know about. But uh, the other is kind of uh, trying, to, trying to find uh, gaps in knowledge. And so from a managerial perspective, you know, where do I have something that only one person knows it, and when they leave the company, they retire or whatever, uh, we're kind of hosed. So um, you know, this is a classic Dilbert. Uh, um, and I don't know if Scott Adams really meant this, but I kind of read into this a little bit uh, differently, too, in that the, this really does represent the worst case. This, this guy kind of is being kept around because he's the only person that knows this one piece of information, right? And if he just died, well, that would be pretty bad. That'd be a bad case scenario, right? Uh, but the company would move on and they would train some more people on some replacement and they would, they would kind of go forth and, and uh, be a better company. But the worst would be, 
you know, one person tells one other person, and now that person is the, the kind of knowledge keeper and uh, continues on not doing a lot other than just being the one person that can do this one job. Um, so anyway, once you start finding out, um, you know, where your gaps in knowledge are in a company, um, ideally, the, the uh, management can start saying, hey, this is important. We do want to uh, fill some of these gaps in, and we might incentivize correctly to you know, train somebody up in this skill or, or, uh, or in this software. So, um, yeah, so you know, one of the things we're, we're trying to say now is, is um, uh, you know, in the Dilbert example, yeah, his direct uh, supervisor kept him around because he did know that he was the person that knew this one critical piece of information. But um, does the rest of your company know that you're that knowledge guru? M maybe not, right? And does someone way high up in management know? So, you know, you're, you're probably way better off um, kind of demonstrating uh, your knowledge to as many people as possible so you can establish yourself as a knowledge leader. Um, and um, so this is just a, a, just a, a quick um, quote. I won't uh, read it, but it's from um, one of my uh, old work colleagues. And he was an uh, R&D engineer that um, when I came in, he was my mentor. And I learned a lot from this guy. Um, but recently, I was asking him just actually if they're, the wiki I started that they're still using uh, still used a uh, um, visual editor. Um, and the answer was no, um, but one of the comments that he had was just basically saying that, you know, before the wiki, he didn't have a reputation um, outside of the engineering group. Everybody in engineering knew he was the guru. He was, he was engineering, really, to the company. But, uh, but outside of that, people in the shop, you know, people in sales um, didn't really understand that. They didn't directly interface with him, so they didn't know that he was the guy that was really critical to the company. So, um, you know, it took me a while to get him to start uh, making edits. I'll, I might talk about that later. Um, but once he grabbed onto it, um, he ended up being a prolific editor. Um, so, you know, at some level, we need uh, companies to change their culture. This is another um, quote from that same page on Intellipedia. But, um, you know, ideally, we can start having management support the idea that uh, knowledge capture and curation is a good thing, um, and and it should be kind of written into their performance plan. You know, they their raises or uh, you know can be built into it as well. Um, but you know, once you start doing that, it's ripe for um, for attacks, right, and manipulation. Someone says. You know, your job is to create uh, 10 pages, you know, every year and do these many edits. And then you just see someone create just rubbish, right? So uh, the, the tracker looks good, but, um, but they're not really doing, you know, the company a, a benefit. So, um, um, yeah, one thing I think uh, is, you know, pretty, pretty awesome is, uh, you know, we're already starting to move toward this idea, I think, and everybody here is kind of on board with it probably, that, um, you know, capturing and curating knowledge is an important aspect of, uh, of companies going into the future. And, and even moving toward, you know, an easy search uh, is something that the newer um, uh, employees coming into a company, they just expect, right? These younger kids coming out of college just expect to be able to Google things. And they come in and, and you know, they're, they're being told that this information is in this, you know, shelf over here and you got to go ask that person there. And even that takes a while to learn. So I think we can do uh, quite a bit better. So um, what about going uh, beyond trust? Um, so I, I really think user pages are, are kind of a crucial first step if you haven't done it already. And I don't think it's going to go away. Um, and I think self-reported uh, expertise is a, is a decent way to start. Um, but there's a lot of data that we're capturing right now, and um, you know extensions are adding to that. So what else can we do? So um, in coming into this uh, conference, I actually did a little bit of brief um, research, and this is kind of what I found. So Advogato was um, an early social networking site, um, and it's actually um, it had a so it, it was a way for programmers to share information with each other. Um, and, uh, and it had a way to kind of filter out fake news where at first there was only four people that were kind of rated as like the top uh, masters, right? And then they could delve out and delegate their trust to others that they, they saw doing well. And by doing that, that person's kind of trust level rose up in the community. 
Um, and, uh, and actually, I found it first um, looking at Wikipedia's uh, interwiki um, link map. Um, and so it's there from the very first edit by Tim Starling. I didn't know what it was, looked it up, um, and then was kind of blown away by how powerful I think this could be. Um, but um, it uses uh, an algorithm similar to um, PageRank, um, but the general idea is, is a page in, in Google's original paper was good when um, other pages linked to it. And it was better if the page that linked to it was a better page. But then it's kind of like this you know, circular reference. How do you actually do that? Well, they do this kind of series of matrixy inversions where they kind of give every page uh, that they've crawled through a, uh, uh, the same score, like 0.5, and then after a few iterations of that, it kind of stabilizes out, and then you start getting something like this. So this is kind of a version of a, a global t uh, trust network. Um, there's also um, Trustlet, um, and they actually use some of the data from um, uh, Avogadro to predict uh, whether, um, uh, oops, uh, whether one user should trust another uh, user. Um, and uh, Kasper Soren um, was, I think, pretty heavily involved in MediaWiki development a while ago. Um, I've seen his name pop up a lot, but uh, I found his name along uh, with this new research on, on uh, wikis. Um, there's also Wikitrust. Um, uh, it was a plug-in to kind of help with vandalism. Um, and the idea was, um, uh, it would kind of search through and try to figure out who the author was, uh, when, the, when the, the specific word was changed, and then um, kind of provide a, a color representation of the trust um, of uh, the accuracy of whether that word should be kind of scrutinized a little bit more. The one kind of, so what it looked like is, or what it, uh, what it used as far as, um, um, you know, how important um, the, the page was is it just said, well, how long is the page and how many views it, has it had? And that kind of gave the page uh, a ranking and then it would say, how persistent is the, uh, this author's uh, words on this page and other pages? And by doing that, it was able to come up with this way to kind of, uh, um, yeah, come up with a, a, a level of trust for this author's next uh, edits. Um, um, and then this one, uh, there was a full um, paper done by a German wiki where they added some gamifications, uh, gamification, uh, and uh, so I don't speak uh, German, but as far as I know, the little bubble things over there mean like uh, very good, good, you know, okay, and not so good down below. Um, so every uh, uh, um, editor could comment on the accuracy of the edits. Uh, um, they, they could um, score it um, and provide a comment, and then you could see um, you know, what other editors saw, um, uh, how stale the, um, the, the page was versus other people um, editing it. Um, and then you could even, the very bottom link there, I think was like all reviews or something, and it showed um, an anonymized version of what everybody else thought about the, uh, the edits on that page. Um, so the, the results from this little study were pretty positive. It increased the participation in edits and reviews. Um, and this is all through a survey that they did, but they, they kind of determined that the, the quality of the wiki content increased as well. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to extend it just briefly, uh, you know, to ourselves, right? Um, you know, could we have a wiki reputation system for, for this group and beyond, right? Um, and, you know, so Lex uh, has famously come up with the, the trusted web of colleagues, which was an idea to kind of do the same thing. Um, but, you know, that could be a place um, where talking to Brian's last talk, you know, you could have this curated list of secure uh, extensions, right? So someone in that group has audited it and said, this extension is good. Um, and, you know, it's this kind of delegated trust where uh, I can't look at that extension and, and, and uh, determine if it's good. But, uh, you know, but maybe Greg did and, uh, and I trust Greg, so I can install that extension. Um, so why do we need trust? Uh, an open wiki is a better wiki. Uh, we need to prove that people are reviewing edits and the correct people are reviewing uh, those edits. So that's it. Any questions? Oh, Mike. So, uh, I'll make one comment and then ha ask a couple of questions. So uh, you're, you're Dilbert uh, comic about uh, 
you know, the one guy, the one person that knows this useful information and they, you know, you have this bus number of one. And so if this person gets run over by a bus, then you've lost that information uh, for good. And that kind of stuff drives me nuts uh, when people do that at work. We see it all the time uh, in our organizations, unfortunately. And I just think that it's important to, for us uh, to ex uh, explain the importance of sharing the information in wikis. And it's not the information that makes you important. It's being able to put that information to use. So every person is going to be have different skills as far as applying that information. So uh, your use of watch analytics, obviously, that excites me. Uh, how much does your management use that to kind of, um, I mean, you, you sort of alluded to the fact that you could use that in performance reviews. Do you guys actually do that? We're, we're starting to, yeah. So um, only recently has management decided to um, start attaching just edits and page creation to performance reviews. Um, but I've been struggling to say, hey, this, you know, it doesn't matter if you just create a page um, and it's rubbish. And then also, you know, if, uh, if our entire, you know, wiki has a bunch of, you know, stale edits, it, it doesn't help as well. And so eventually now they're starting to say, yeah, this actually does make sense. And I didn't show it, maybe you'll show it on your talk, but, um, you know, there's a whole series of tables where I can see everybody's, you know, uh, every user's uh, watch list, and I can see how well they're doing, right? And so I can start giving that to management and saying, hey, here's how well, you know, is your, as a department, here's how well everybody's doing under that. So they are asking right now um, if, if we can separate that out somehow, like if I can create lists that are just for this group, for, for one uh, manager, but they want to start using it. It's not built in yet, but we're moving toward it. Yeah, I think filtering is something. Uh, filtering by group uh, or by user group is something that James uh, has on his radar for that. Cool. Uh, for some new revisions. Uh, what about like the user feedback? Do you in our groups we tend to see some people that are very active at doing their pending reviews, and then there's those that just blatantly mock the number and just ignore it. And some of those are our managers. <laughs> uh, what's your experience with that? Uh, yeah, I have the same experience. Um, you know, uh, the one benefit is um, there's increased adoption. So um, uh, throughout time, you know, there's some people that, uh, you know, have resistance at first and then they, for whatever reason, um, we break down that stickiness and then they start adopting, right? Uh, but um, yeah, there's certainly others that just will probably never ever do it and that's okay. But, um, but the majority is moving that way. So, so my question is that your, your metrics are both basically or, or mostly activity based, you know, how many people came in and changed and do you have any metrics or, or just a way to capture uh, change? So let's say that, that someone in, wrote the Scrape Wiki page and, and uh, many people visited it and within the company a process changed, hmm. you know, and, and, and that process actually led to like improvements, like there was less cycle time, maybe there were hard savings, maybe there were soft savings, which actually feed into hard savings. H have you thought of a way of capturing that? I, I have no idea about capturing it uh, as, um, as far as like a strict metric, but I, I have some kind of anecdotal stories that, yeah. that I could uh, talk about. And actually, um, there is a, another talk I, I had that there's a couple of those in it that I could, I could um, explore a little bit more, but yeah. So is, is capturing that with, with, uh, with stories then? Is that a way, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, just curious. I, um, it's, it's how I use, uh, so every time there's something that's good that happens, uh, I just mm -hmm. note it, and then every time someone says, here's why I'm not gonna do it, I just try to use one of these good stories and say, well, these guys did it because of this, mm -hmm. and here's why it worked well. And, and my last company, I was very aware of a lot of uh, the issues that different departments had. Like I knew how much uh, cost and scrap the shop uh, had, right? Mm -hmm. And I could actually go and tell them like, well, you, know, you spent $2 million doing this and uh, you could be doing it better if, if you were actually up to date, right? So I, I don't know how to capture it like as a, as a really defined something sure. um, other than just stories. If you find it out, I'm, I'd love to know. And then my next question is um, just the rankings, you know, where, where they get five stars or three stars. Do you, do you use that in your wiki? I haven't, no. So um, all I, all I um, use right now is kind of just um, t 
total edits that a user um, does. And then Watch Analytics has um, a whole series of metrics about you know, how quickly the uh, user comes back and views the page um, in their watch list after a, a change has been, uh, has been made. Um, so that's all I've used. Everything else that I showed was just stuff that I've researched in the last week that um, I've found other people have used. And, and I have all the white papers that, um, that, that they've done if anybody's interested. Thanks. Um, so, since you use watch analytics, do you use the, do you display, <coughs> excuse me, do you display the page score to all users? Is like, is that used as part of your validation of how good a page is based on how often it's, how many people are reviewing it and how, how quickly it's reviewed? We, uh, it's, it's on there, but, um, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not being used as like an official something yet, but that's where I want to go. I mean, use, looking at just that map, right? Right now you'd just be embarrassed by it, um, but it at least shows us that right now we're not doing well and that we can get better. Yeah. Uh, and then um, kind of a side question, just on the user pages themselves, do you find, are you just using those pages as, of, as information on that person versus a working space for them? So, I mean, I think a lot of us are comfortable with using actual user pages on the wiki as kind of for our own work and stuff, but a lot of newer users are not as comfortable with going to that like different namespace and stuff. And so we have a few that will put stuff on their specific user pages versus just having as info on a person. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, for all user pages, they, they get the silly little, you know, info box banner thing. But then I also just made, uh, you know, like a to-do and notes thing, because. Um, and you have to kind of tell people uh, that, hey, everybody else gets to see this. Um, uh, and a lot of people, there's two things that people didn't seem to understand about it. One, everybody else got to, got to see it. And a lot of people were thinking that this is the same notes that everybody else, if they clicked on it, would be editing. Um, but, um, but yeah, people are starting to use it to kind of collect notes and, and, uh, and actually they're using discussion pages now to, to talk to each other. Um, actually, leveraging off of that, I've got two, I've got, I guess, uh, two comments. Um, what, just about every wiki that I built prior to last July, um, so wikis in an enterprise setting, um, we, depending upon the content in that wiki, we would design the user pages to reflect content, so we would put queries there. If there were pages, let's say there was a wiki that had um, meeting notes, and you would tag in a meeting who was present in that meeting, mm. then on the user's wiki, yeah. uh, on the user's user page, you would have a query that would show what are all of the, you know, and maybe using header tabs, you know, a tab for meetings. What are all the meetings this person attended? What are all the notes that they edited? What are, what are all the, and so you use the user page as a person, as a way to get even more information about that user, and that would help also in the reputation building. And so if somebody wanted to use a, a page as a scratch pad, you know, as a place to gather their own notes for themselves, often they would do it in a sub page of their user page. Yeah. But the user page itself was something we, on just about every wiki, had a template called user. And so the user page would just have brace, brace, user, brace, brace. And the user template would do all the queries and generate all of the information that would populate what was in that user page. The other thing, the other comment is, um, you mentioned something really important also about using the user's real name. And so what we typically did, um, since we used um, the enterprise authentication system to, gener to, to use whatever the corporate username for logging into the wiki, that often was not reflective of the person's real name. So we used the display title magic word to set for everybody's user page the, pa the title that was displayed for it to be their real name. Yeah. So you'd see their real name showing up at the top, but also if you used the display, display title extension, then anywhere a link to that user page occurred. So for example, on somebody's user page, it would list all the meetings they attended and all of the other attendees. Those other attendees would be listed as links to their user pages, but the link text that would show up would be that person's real name, not their username. Nice. And so what you do is you start seeing 
in the familiar form people's real names showing up across the wiki and that also helps in reputation building. Um, so. Awesome. Well, two quick things. I, I have used some, uh, an extension called show real name or show real usernames. Um, and uh, um, I did like it. It didn't do a couple things I was hoping it, it would do. Um, but the other comment is, is, uh, is that open source? Can I grab your, uh, your yeah. I would, I would love that, yeah. It's even been integrated more into. Yeah, Semantic Media Wiki actually. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, yes. So d display title, the display title magic word is built into MediaWiki, and yes, they're, um, it, it's integrated completely in MediaWiki core. Um, semantic MediaWiki, if you're using it in queries, query results that um, any page that has a display title set, the link text will be the um, display title that's set. And then if you use the display title extension, Anywhere else that you have a link to page that has the display title set, that link text will be the cool. set display title. All right. Thank you.